Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. Forget the groundhog, when does spring actually start? Some people say March 1st, others argue March 21st. We have a different opinion, but it's a little tougher to calculate. Of course, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have tons of great explainers and coverage of all of the storms that will happen, so you don't want to miss that. If you ask any astronomer when spring starts, they'd say Sunday, March 21st at precisely 11.33 a.m. That's when the sun's most direct rays will cross the equator from the southern hemisphere to the northern. You might remember back to middle school, the reason we have seasons is because of Earth's 23.5 degree tilt on its axis. It's not about how much sunlight we get, but rather how direct that sunlight is. During our summertime, we're pointed more towards the sun. On the spring equinox, which marks the commencement of spring, both the northern and the southern hemisphere receive approximately equal light and darkness. Here's a cool shot showing what that looks like on satellite from space. Now, that's all fine and well, but that doesn't have an instantaneous effect on the weather. In fact, it's actually a pretty poor definition. By late May or June, it's solidly summer across much of the lower 48, but astronomical summer doesn't come until the solstice on June 21st. There's also an effect called seasonal lag, which results from the ground and the atmosphere taking a while to heat up or cool down. That means the most extreme temperatures of a season often trail the solstice by about a month or so. We could also examine the meteorological definition of the seasons, which are blocked off by calendar months. Meteorological spring, for example, begins on March 1st, summer on June 1st, fall on September 1st, and winter on December 1st. I personally like that. After all, December, January, February are the three coldest calendar months, but it's still not perfect. If we wanted to do it the right way, we could look at locations individually and break it down into the warmest three months of the year, the coldest three months, and the most in-between six months. Those would represent spring and fall, so let's take a stab at that. We'll define summer and winter as each being about 91 days long. If we have 365 days in a year, 91 is roughly a quarter. Sure, one of the seasons will end up with an extra day, but you get the idea. We'll start with Washington, D.C. Here's a graph made from all the data at Reagan National Airport dating back to World War II. According to the data, D.C.'s average high on July 20th is 90.75 degrees, making it the peak of summertime warmth. That's also true for the average temperature when you factor in the low. So let's construct a 91-day summer season around that center point. That means summer would run from June 5th through September 4th. Now we do winter. January 22nd is the bottom of winter's chill in the nation's capital. The average high is only 42, and the long-standing average low was 24.3. That means winter should run from roughly December 7th through March 8th. Perfect! Now we'll call fall as being from September 5th through December 6th, and spring starts on March 9th. Seems about right. Granted, spring and fall won't always be a perfect 90 or 91 days long, since they're the transition seasons between the more rigidly defined winter and summer. I think this works well though, so let's do the same for a couple other cities. We'll try Boston. The average high peaks at 83.7 degrees on July 18th, which combined with the average low gives an average temperature of 75.3 degrees during the heart of summer. That means summer runs from June 3rd through September 3rd. Winter is almost identical to D.C. The coldest day of the year is January 21st, so we'll say winter runs from December 6th through March 7th. That means spring starts March 8th and fall on September 4th. How about somewhere farther south? Atlanta. Once again, this surprised me. The hottest day is again July 21st, which is almost perfectly matching D.C., so we'll say summer runs from June 6th through September 5th. January 8th is the coldest, although I'm from New England, so I don't have much sympathy for Atlanta. So we'll say winter begins early, November 24th, and ends February 22nd. Now Chicago, the peak of their summertime curve is just a little bit later. We'll say around July 26th or 27th. That's when the average high is 83.3 degrees. So we'll say summer runs from June 11th through September 10th. Winter is at its harshest in the Windy City around the first or second day of February. That's when the average low is a frigid 15.8 degrees. So let's say December 19th to March 20th for winter. That means spring would start on March 21st, the astronomical definition, but wouldn't be quite as long as autumn. Right now it seems with our methodology that things are lining up. Let's aim for tougher to predict places though. Denver has a weird shape in its curve. The peak comes early in July, but then it's like the back half of summer almost stretches longer. There's also a sharper drop off in temperatures in the fall than a ramp up in the spring. If you look at the start of July, you'll notice daytime highs are higher, but nighttime lows are lower. That's because the air is drier, so you get bigger diurnal or daily swings. Thus, we'll peg the peak of summer as being around July 19th, when the average high is 88.9 degrees. Therefore, summer starts June 4th and runs through September 4th. Old Man Winter has his tightest grasp around January 2nd, with an average nighttime low of just 14 degrees. 
We'll say winter starts around November 18th then, and spring doesn't come until February 19th. This doesn't seem right, however, because winter lingers. It would take until March 8th for temperatures to get back to where they are in mid-November when our methodology defines the start of winter. Clearly, our technique has some flaws, especially in the warm or extreme climates. Let's consider Phoenix, which exemplifies the issue quite well. If we again define summer as the 91-day window around the peak of warmth, we get some problems. For starters, daytime highs are hottest in late June before the moisture arrives, but nighttime lows are mildest three weeks later, skewing our estimated peak of summer. Averaging them would give us July 13th as the anchor point of summer, and that seems all right. But if we take 45 days on either side, that'd be May 29th to August 28th. Here's the issue. When I plot these points on our seasonality curve, you'll see the season is not at all symmetrical. The quote-unquote end of summer by this definition would be 8.47 degrees warmer than the start. So it seems like this definition doesn't work for cities that don't have a perfect sinusoidal wave, or kind of an up and down regular temperature curve. Instead, let's break out some statistics. We can represent Phoenix's average annual temperature with a mean of 72.3 degrees. It's not normally distributed, so we can't talk standard deviation, but we can look at quantiles. Here's what that means. Let's define summer as the top 25% of days when organized by temperature. Our 75th percentile is 86.42 degrees, so we use that as our cutoff. By that definition, summer starts June 12th and ends September 12th. That technique doesn't really care about midpoint, which is probably the best option in irregular climates with bigger temperature swings. If we do winter the same way, we'll take all days with the 25th percentile temperature or below. That threshold is 58.48 degrees, so say winter begins November 25th and ends February 25th. Spring comes nice and early on February 26th. All told, we like the percentile approach the best. Summer is in the top 25% of days, winter the bottom 25%, and spring and fall are in between. That doesn't guarantee spring and fall are of equal duration, but we know that weather oftentimes doesn't fit into a cookie cutter pattern. Fortunately, spring is just around the corner for millions of Americans, but so too is severe weather season. Good thing though, we have you covered every step of the way here on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, right here in the MyRadar app. I'm meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Follow MyRadar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download MyRadar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.